In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 tips and tricks on how you can improve your setup's aesthetics, upgrade your PC's performance, and add a bit of functionality as well, all without having to spend even a penny. That's right, everything in this video is absolutely free. If you don't have a dedicated spot in your setup to charge your devices, then you're gonna love today's sponsor, Shargeek. Shargeek has a wide variety of portable chargers with an exquisite appearance, like the Retro 67W, which resembles the original Macintosh PC. But check this out, once you plug it in, you get this matrix effect on the display, which is pretty freaking cool. The charger has multiple USB-C ports, each with a dynamic power distribution to handle the power outputs for up to three devices at the same time, up to 67 watts. But if you require more power, get a load of this guy. The Storm 2, a cyberpunk-themed transparent power bank with a massive 25,600 milliamp hour capacity. With a 100 watt PD fast charging protocol, the Storm 2 can fast charge three of your devices at the same time and looking cool while doing it. The Storm 2 also has an intelligent IPS screen that visualizes the battery life, output distribution, running temperature and DC voltage in a clear and intuitive way, showing you the whole process of charging. And just for my subscribers, you guys can get a discount off the Retro 2 and the 35 watt charger by visiting my link down below. All right, back to the video. I think we can all agree that the center point of all setups are the monitors. It's usually the first thing that you notice when you look at a setup. So it only makes sense to maintain that focus so that the monitors complement everything else in your setup. So one of the things you can do if you're running multiple monitors like me is to make sure that they are installed in the correct orientation. You do this by making sure the bezel or the chin of the monitor is facing outwards, regardless if you're stacking monitors or you're putting them side by side in vertical mode. Now what this does is it eliminates the bezel between your monitors for a more seamless look. You always wanna face the bezel on the opposite direction of the connecting monitor. Another benefit to this is that you have easy access to the menu buttons since they are now facing the outside. If the bezel is towards the monitor, you are blocking access to the joystick menu. While we are focused on the monitors, it's important to keep a clean desktop so that you can find your applications a lot easier. If you have a ton of games installed on your PC, I recommend using OGL, also known as One Game Launcher. This will consolidate all of your games on one app, freeing up your taskbar space, and it will keep your desktop looking clean. OGL works with pretty much all the game launchers, and it's compatible with apps as well. In the settings, you can switch between light and dark mode. You can also customize the width and the height of each launcher, which is very useful if you have a ton of games that you wanna fit on one page. You can even create custom launch pads for games that are standalone and don't have a specific launcher. Another simple feature that surprisingly a lot of people don't know about is removing the taskbar on all your extra monitors. This will simply clean up your desktop as the taskbar will only show up on your primary display. To configure this, right click on your desktop and click on display settings. Then click on the display that you use the most and select the option that says, make this my main display. By the way, real quickly while you're still here, click on the advanced display option and make sure that your refresh rate is set to the highest. When you buy a brand new monitor, the refresh rate is usually set to 60 hertz right out of the box. You have to actually go into the settings and change the refresh rate yourself. Anyways, go ahead and close the window and then right click on your taskbar and go into the taskbar settings. You can also search for this by hitting the windows key. Click the arrow on the taskbar behaviors and make sure to uncheck the option where it says show my taskbar on all the displays. As you can see, the taskbar disappears on all of your extra monitors and you have a much cleaner desktop. This next app is actually one of my favorites in this video and I'm sure a lot of you guys use it too. Translucent TV is another free app that has a very basic function that makes a noticeable impact. Translucent TV makes your taskbar translucent, so it gets rid of the taskbar and only shows the icons for a cleaner and minimal look. You also get to see more of the wallpaper this way, which I think is pretty cool. In addition to that, you also have the option of changing the color of the taskbar by going into the accent color settings. So if your setup has a specific color scheme, you can customize the taskbar to match that color. Alternatively, you can install rounded TB if you wanna give your taskbar rounded edges instead. I don't know about you guys, but I like my taskbar the way I like my women, curvy. With rounded TB, you can not only adjust the size of the taskbar, but also how curvy you want the edges. 
However, if you guys want to take your Taskbar customization to another level, I highly recommend installing Taskbar X. With this, you're able to do a lot of things like modify the taskbar and get rid of the corner section to give your desktop a much cleaner look. To do this, you have to visit the link below and download Taskbar XI if you're using Windows 11. If you're using Windows 10, download Taskbar X. I'll have the links to all of these down below if you guys are interested. So once you're at the GitHub website, click on the release link on the right side and download the latest version. Then click the file and install it. Once you open it up, make sure to click on the following options. Ignore Max, No Tray, and Hide Tray. And then hit Apply. As you can see now, we have just the middle taskbar visible without anything in the corners, which in my opinion looks the cleanest. Rainmeter is another very popular free app that allows you to fully customize your desktop. I mean, there are endless amount of skins that you can download that will match your preference and your setup's theme. However, the skin I'm using with my setup is called Drop Top 4. And with this, I'm able to bring back some of the shortcuts that we lost, like the date and time, along with a few other useful features. So after downloading and installing Rainmeter, visit the link below for the Drop Top skin, and go ahead and click the Release Note link and download the latest version. Since you have Rainmeter already installed, all you have to do is double click the file and just hit install. Afterwards, just follow the prompts on screen to continue the installation. On the second page, you can set a custom home button and the size of the drop down bar. On the third page, you can set a theme. And personally, I like going with a transparent theme so the bar disappears from the background, but this is entirely up to you. After you finish up the setup process, the drop down bar will appear in just a few seconds. Now without boring you guys to death going over all the really cool things you can do here, I'll just go over a few of the important things that I use. The taskbar that we removed from the bottom right corner is now moved to the top right. You have access to all the background apps, the recent downloads, internet, and weather. This is also where you'll find your audio settings, date and time, and the calendar. On the left side is where you have access to all of your apps and quick access to your game library, which is very useful if you don't want to install the one game launcher that we talked about earlier in the video. You can also categorize your game so it's easier to find if you have a massive game library. If your PC is located a bit far from you and you want a more convenient way of powering it on, then here's a simple way of doing it without spending money. You can configure your PC so that it wakes up by pressing a key on your keyboard. Now to do this, you have to simply put your PC to sleep instead of powering it off. The PC remains in low power state, meaning its current state is kept in memory, but other parts are shut down so it doesn't use power. When you're ready to get back to work, just simply hit a key on your keyboard and you're back where you left off. Now this feature is available on default for most systems, but if it's not enabled in yours, then you have to change a few settings in Windows so that you can use it. Just simply hit the start button and then type in device manager. Click on the arrow next to the keyboard category and then find and right click on the keyboard you're using with your PC and then click on properties. Head on over to the power management tab and make sure that this option is checked so that your keyboard is able to wake up the PC. Now if you want to completely power off your PC and turn it on with a press of a key, a remote switch is the only option here. There are a few options out there but the one I use with my wife's setup is a button switch from Amazon that costs $9. I actually mentioned this in the video itself while I was building my wife her setup, but the cool thing about this switch is that the cable is long enough to where you can install this anywhere you want for convenient access. This is perfect for anyone that has a PC in another room or if their PC is far away from them, like a wall-mounted PC for example. I'll leave a link to this below for anyone interested in picking one up for their PC. You can also improve your setup by making sure your PC doesn't thermal throttle while you're gaming or using it for productivity such as editing a video, 3D modeling, etc. The best way to keep the temps down in your PC is by having direct access to the fan settings without having to go into the BIOS. Fan Control is a free app that gives you that access, but it's much more than just a fan app. Through here, you can control all the fans that are connected to your motherboard's fan headers, whether that is a pump if you're doing a water cool build or standalone case fans. But what's cool about this app is that you can set custom fan curves. For example, I can add a graph fan curve option and set the temperature sensor to my graphics card. Then I can set the front case fans to the sensor of my GPU. So while I'm gaming and the GPU temperature rises, the fan speed of the front fans will now rise as well to keep the card cool. 
You can also do the same thing for your CPU, and I just love how intuitive this app is. You can also create multiple profiles so they don't overlap with the task you're doing. So you can have one separate just for gaming, you can have another one separate for streaming, editing videos, etc. To my knowledge, this is the only free software that gives you this level of customization for your fans without having to go into the BIOS. And lastly, let's give your PC a little bit of performance boost because after all, your PC is what powers your entire setup. There are a lot of options that you can disable that will drastically speed up your PC and in most cases give you extra FPS in games. I actually tested this myself by running a benchmark in Cyberpunk 2077, so check this out. Before all the changes, I got 83.42 FPS in 1440p ultra settings. After the changes, I got a 14.34 FPS increase just by changing a few settings in Windows. So the first thing I recommend is to disable any apps that you don't want your PC to load when you boot up your system. This will not only get you to the desktop faster, but it will reduce the amount of resources used in the background. Right click on your taskbar and go into your task manager. Click on the start apps tab on the left and disable all the apps that you don't need when your PC boots up by right clicking and selecting disable. Next, we're going to disable all the services that we don't use to free up additional resources. Hit the Windows key on your keyboard once again and type in msconfig to bring up the system configuration. Click on the services tab and make sure to check the option below that says hide all Microsoft services because we do need those on. Then simply just go down the list and uncheck the services that you don't need or use and then once you're done, just hit apply and OK. If you haven't already, change the power plan right now. Hit the Windows key and type in power plan. Make sure that high performance is selected. And in some cases, you might see ultimate performance. If you do see that, make sure that's selected instead. Xbox Game Bar is also another app that's reported to slow down your system. And it's a good idea to disable it, especially if you don't use any of its features. After hitting the Windows button, search for Game Bar controller settings and make sure that it's disabled. And lastly, when you're gaming, I highly recommend enabling gaming mode. This will prevent apps from using resources in the background like Windows updates, driver installs, and more. With these changes, I was able to get 14 more FPS in Cyberpunk, which is wild. I know that most of these frames came from switching the power plan because the GPU is drawing more power technically, uh, but the other settings did contribute as well, just not as much as switching the power plan. Guys, was there any tips and tricks that I missed in this video? If so, let me know in the comment section and I'll make sure to include it in part two. If this video was at all helpful to you guys, consider tossing a like before you head out. Also consider subscribing for more awesome setup content coming your way. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.